Okay, guys, this is me again at, um, I wanted to show a, a different um, side to what um, people like myself living with HIV and AIDS go through um, every three months, and it really depends on where your counts are. Right now, um, I come to the doctor every three months, and wh what we do is the doctor will draw your blood work, and depending on um, how well you're doing on, and if you are on any kind of medication, they monitor two different types of um, levels in your blood. The one is your CD4 count and what that is is your CD4 cells is what fights off infections and also your viral load and basically um, what that is is the amount of the HIV that is in your body, in your bloodstream and your ultimate um, goal or for anybody's goal for the medical professionals is to get it down to what's called undetectable and that kind of confuses a lot of people because people are thinking um, undetectable means that they're no longer infected. Once you're infected with HIV, until they come out with a cure, which there is none at this point, um, the goal is to get it down to undetectable levels. That way you be, remain healthier, that way you, your body is fighting and controlling off the disease, and that's along with the medications. You don't do that um, naturally on your own. So that's the ultimate goal, and mine for the past, uh, I'd say about six months to a year now. So this is um, my doctor, Dr. Burnside, the Burnside Clinic. He's been in business from the very get-go of the um, AIDS epidemic back in the early 80s. Um, most doctors, such as himself, he started, you don't start out um, being an um, HIV and AIDS doctor, but you know, he fell the knee in his hometown and he decided to go in that profession. He has an incredible clinic and very well known throughout the United States and throughout the medical professionals. Um, and so right now what we're gonna do is gonna show you what I go through every three months and meet my doctor and people that are in here. So let's go on in. Person living with HIV, but also um, that I also work in it. Um, we're here at PALS. This is our new building that we just moved to last month. And, and PALS stands for what? A month, month ago, it stands for Palmetto AIDS Life Support Services. We are one of the um, largest ASOs here in the southeast. In fact, we just celebrated our 20th year of service here in um, Columbia. Um, we ranked second after Aid Atlanta, and we were founded back in 1985. So right. I did good. I got my thing going. Um, we just moved to this new location. We're located um, more downtown, and we just moved our whole facility here, um, which is probably less than couple miles away from where we were. Um, we serve, um, you know, Columbia and South Carolina rank continuously in the top 10 for newly reported AIDS cases, so um, you can see why we do have such a, a need for a service, and not just medical aspect, but here at PALS what we offer more, and more importantly, is the emotional support, and also we also do help with housing, um, we do help with getting me um, medical appointments, we do help with um, get, make sure everybody's getting their um, medications, um, and one of our biggest supports um, here that we offer is what I do, is our case management department, and our, one of our main focuses is that we help people with um, HIV, living with HIV and AIDS, because as you well know that you need a good support system, and so many people don't have that. And we're the um, we're the voice for them, we're the support for them, and that's one of our main things that that I'm so proud of here that we do here at PALS. Also, this past year we just got um, some devastating news, and I know all across the United States um, they're doing budget cuts left and right. But one of our most important and probably our most integral parts here at PALS funding, our Ryan White funding, is getting cut tremendously and what basically what that come down to in a nutshell is that it's going to cut out basically my job and what we do here and our core here at PALS work as far as serving our clients that need this emotional support because HIV and AIDS yes it's come a, a long way and we're you know getting ready to hit the 25 year mark of the first diagnosis but also that it, it goes so much further than the medical aspect the, the emotional support of it is is what I I feel goes so deep, you know, is, is so important to everyone, especially myself. Um, and our clients here, a lot of them cannot disclose their status for one reason or another, 
and you have to have somebody that you can lean on and even though that you know that we don't see as many people as sick as, as what we used to in the early and late 80s um, but that still does exist here and somebody's car's going off so we're gonna go inside and, and quit me talking for a minute but basically what I'm gonna do right now is just show you a little bit around pals what we have here to offer and continue talking on a little bit so let's go inside and see what's going on come on Troy we'll get in here see we're all locked in too so we can hey um, my name is Brian Morgan I am uh, I live in. Hi, I'm Brian, um, HIV positive, and I was diagnosed in December on December 4th of 1998. Um, today, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you insight on what I do with some of my closest friends who all, who also happen to be co-workers of mine, where we work at PALS, which stands for Palmetto AIDS Life Support Services. Um, and just one quick thing, I've, I've given some footage of where I work um, in another tape. But one thing about go bitch <laughs> go back to work now. Um, ADAP in the okay. uh, three fifty CD four count. Yeah, that's what I did pretty yeah. much. Yeah, that's, yeah. Your CD four has to be like three fifty. Yeah, in yeah. order to qualify. Yeah, and not many people are you know especially you know now you know living with that you know when you get down to that situation and then even if you do get approved for ADAP. There's still a waiting list. I know. I even me. I, there was no waiting list for me, but there is still a window period. Even so, if you're on a waiting list for up to a year, I don't even know how long the waiting list will be. I mean, it'll be incredible how much it'll be, um, because we are living in the state with one of the highest, you know, um, rates HIV and AIDS rates per capita. I have to get that straight. Um, per hundred thousand, I think. Um, but always, I always say that I'm not a HIV and AIDS expert or medical oh, I think about things I forget. I feel like I need to have a clipboard. So. Well, my sounding board or wrap up session, um, I just have a question for the medical providers or drug representatives. You either want to pay for hospital visits or hospital inpatient, outpatient, or you want to pay for medication, and which is cheap. You know, that's what I have to say on the situation. Yeah. You know. Excellent. Yeah. I really think that we're going to go back to the way it was 25 years ago. People are going to get sicker, quicker, uh, the virus is going to spread, and people won't be able to get the help that they really need. Okay. And me, of course, last but not least, um, wrapping up on a, a good note, but a really important note, um, and speaking to everyone, you know, personally and to y'all too, which y'all know, is that HIV and AIDS is 100% preventable. There's absolutely no reason in this world from even years ago, I mean, I can't even think even since I've become infected, I shouldn't have even become infected. It's a lack of education. It's a lack of knowledge about the um, what you've you know, come involved in or you come, it, it's just simple steps. It's not about being totally abstinent because we live in, a, a, you know, it's reality. And a lot of people, especially in the South, you know, if, if we try to do our prevention and give condoms, we're promoting sex and we're promoting pr promiscuity. That has nothing to do with it. We know that we are all human beings that are sexual human beings. That's just a natural thing for all of us. Mine has slacked off, I have to say, and that's another thing that people don't realize. You become HIV positive, you ain't got to worry about talking about safe sex anymore. <laughs> Honestly, for me, and I'm only going by me and a lot of people that I know, that's the last thing on my mind anymore, you know, because it goes way deeper of having to, you know, you fall in love with somebody and I cannot sit there and not tell them, you know, I have to with all things because I would never want to pass this on to anyone. Not only would it defeat what I've been trying to do here and what I've been doing for the past eight years or the past seven and whatever months since I became positive by keeping somebody else from walking, taking, a, you know, the steps that I've taken. Um, but the fact that the testing is available and, and it's getting tested not to be shunned against or to be made fun at, but to be tested to know where your what your status is and that you can protect yourself and prevent it from giving it to the people 